Hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to show you how to block print. Very basic block print, but making your own blocks. You can block print with all sorts of things. It's really sophisticated potato printing. But instead of using potatoes, you can use all sorts of other things. So I've got a selection here of blocks. Now you can buy commercially prepared blocks. And these are some lovely Indian wooden blocks that I bought on my recent trip to India. Other ones I've had for quite some time. You can get patterns, you can get animals, you can get uh, different motifs. So these could be used for your block printing. However, to create and make your own blocks is quite exciting. Uh, here I've just got a piece of wood and I've stuck some twigs on it with PVA glue. That I can use to make patterns. I can cut blocks and foam is an ideal product uh, to cut out and to use as printing blocks. Bits of cardboard, all sorts of different things, ends of twigs you can use. So today I'm going to show you how to uh, make a block using adhesive backed foam. So this you can buy in um, children's stores, craft stores, hobby craft. It's a piece of a, a thin piece of foam and it's got an adhesive backing which is ideal because we can draw our shapes, our patterns onto the paper side, cut it out and then use it uh, to do uh, our block printing. So in order to transfer a pattern, here I've got some leaf shapes that I've drawn. So in order to make a, stent, a block out of those, I've got some carbon paper. I know it, we don't use it much nowadays, but it is still available. So carbon paper onto my, the back of my foam block, my design on top, and then I'm going to use a biro or a stiletto, ballpoint of some sort, so that I can work round and draw around my design. Come round here. And then when you lift up your carbon paper, when you lift up, you've transferred that image ready for you to cut out. The important thing to remember is any image you're drawing on the back here will be a reverse image when you come to print it. So that's just something to remember. Once you have drawn out your pattern, you then need to cut it out. And I just use, you could use a craft knife, I just use a small pair of sharp scissors. So I'm cutting out and going all the way around my block. So I end up with my cut out shapes. So this has still got the paper on the back, then there was my design. Now I need to stick this to something. It could be a, a thin block of wood. I find uh, the best thing that I use is foam board. So I'm using foam board, which is a sheet of polystyrene with card on both sides. It's very strong, but it's very lightweight. So I'm going to peel off the paper backing from my foam shapes. Peel it all off and then I can stick that down onto my foam board. As I say this could be a strong piece of cardboard at the back but the foam board is very strong and sturdy. So that will be placed down and stuck down onto the foam board. There we go. So that gives that. When I put my ink on here, I can then print it. However, holding it, I don't want to end up with my fingers getting messy onto the fabric. So I need a hinge. So this is where I'll use some masking tape. I will fold the masking tape in the middle and then stick it down on the back of my foam board. And that gives me a little handle that I can lift up and I can block print without getting my fingers messy on the outside edges. So that's made my block. I'm now going to print with it. Fabric. Any fabric you can print onto, something fairly smooth. You could try something with a texture on it. I'm going to start off printing on some white cotton. Now your printing surface 
wants to have a little bit of padding to it so it could be a sheet of foam it could be a thin towel I'm going to lay a towel down just so that you're not pressing down onto a hard surface and you should get a better print uh, if you take the time to do this I'm also going to put a cover cloth on because the ink will go through my main fabric and give me an interesting drop cloth we call it underneath so I'm going to lay my fabric out I could just go off and print straight off if you want to print within a certain area you can mask off your fabric I've made a, a square mask to pop down onto the background fabric there so when I print I'm working within a square you could use masking tape to mask out your outer edges something to print with pigment to print with print with I'm using my water-based fabric paints and inks which I use when I'm teaching and have used for 40 years since I was first introduced to them at college uh, they're a thick pigment and for block printing you need a pigment that's thick if you have some, anything that's too thin and runny, it's just going to pour off uh, and bleed into the fabric. You need nice crisp prints. So I've mixed up, I've taken some Oxford Blue and some Sea Green. And I've also got Extender Base because I want the colours to be a bit paler. So I added some pigment in, so I'm going with the blue. I'm going to spread it onto my tile. I've got a mixture, so you don't have to just work with one colour. You can mix with two colours within an individual print. And you can apply it in different ways. You can use a sponge to apply that colour uh, onto your block or you could use a roller. Um, a foam roller is quite good. I'm just going to mask down, tape down my paper mask. I've used newsprint for my mask. It's quite slightly absorbent and is quite good for making areas there. So I've got my block, I've got my paint or ink tend to call them inks when you're screen printing or block printing and then I'm applying the colour you want to try and avoid getting too much onto the back of your block just try and get the ink onto the foam a sponge ends up giving quite nice textures as well and you don't have to solidly cover the whole thing you can leave some of them with little gaps and I find that makes a more interesting block. So I have my block and now I can press down. And press by hand or press with a roller and then carefully lift up and there I have my block. Now I could do another print without re-inking so that I get a pale soft background. And I can keep working and overlaying on these. You can see here I've got a little bit of splodging. That's why I did get some of the ink onto the, uh, the background. And I pushed a little bit too hard on those ends. But, you know, don't be too precious about it. I think sometimes these sort of odd effects that you get here. I could take my sponge, which has still got some pigment on, and just add a bit of extra texture to make that a purposeful part of your, of your design to make the background.